Welcome back guys. So are you all ready for another episode of fall or autumn smalls that sell? There were so many awesome ideas hitting the shelves this year that I decided to do a second part to the first one. So if you have not seen that, make sure to check that out. If you're new to the channel, what this is all about is we break down what is hot, what is popular, what is trending in the big box stores. In this case, the fall items. That way that you can put your own twist to these products and make these things at home for yourself or to sell. So just a reminder before we hop into this, if you have built something, even a first time build, and you are proud of it, make sure to submit it to the brag board that is up. I will throw a link in the description. So check that out and check out everyone's brags. And for this episode, I picked out some pretty cool items and I'm pretty excited to teach you all how to make. So let's go ahead and hop into it. And so for this first one, it really caught my eye. And what I noticed is that it was on several of the top sites. So whenever you find something like that, where there are several sites carrying the exact same item, they may call it something different, but it's the exact same item. That means that they are all selling them and they are hot. They're just like anyone else. They're competitors. So they keep an eye on what each other are selling. And then they bring that into their store or something very, very similar. So what is it that caught my eye? This folding fence system. So it didn't catch my eye just because of course, I love fence pickets, but it's actually how they've made and distressed this fence system that makes this perfect for marketing. So right now, this is in the fall section of most stores. But if you look at the staging in a lot of these, they are letting people know that really you can use it any time of the year in about any type of setting. You can use this as an inside decoration or an outside decoration. Or something else that I thought of is you can actually use this as a decorative pet barrier instead of those ugly, you know, like pull out fences that lock in and all that stuff. This would look 10 times better than any of those that are on the market. So let me tell you a little bit more about this fence system. Each one of these consists of three different panels connected with hinges. And they're selling these in three different sizes. All of the total lengths are the same. They are all 56 inches long, but the heights are different. And they're also selling these for a pretty nice price. The 16 inch panels are $114. The 24 inch panels are $130. And then the 32 inch panels are $150 for a set. Now you may be thinking, okay, that's really not too terrible. I mean, $150 for this type of decor. But let me tell you how to make even the largest set for less than 10 bucks. All right. So if you are a palette person, this is going to be a perfect palette wood project because you'll have less distressing to do. But for this situation, let's go ahead and say that you're not, you're going to have to buy the material. The irony is I would actually use fence pickets to build this, of course. And to show you just how easy these things are to make, I made a small panel just as a demonstration. So here's my version, just using the scrap paint that I had laying around. And I also decided for mine, instead of all the pickets being the same height, that I would actually make some short ones and throw in there. But again, this is just an example of what you can do. So I'll get into the actual distressing and the coloring here in a minute. Let's go over the sizes of these boards real quick. Given the total length, divide that by three. It tells me that each one of these panels are close to 19 inches wide. And if the gaps that are in between each one of these five pickets pickets are an inch wide a piece, that means that the pickets themselves will be right around three inches wide. And really you can use any type of material for this. It doesn't have to be a picket, doesn't have to be pallet wood. It just needs to fit this width. But if you are using a fence picket, they're only five and a half inches wide. So we can't get two three inch boards out of one picket. So let's bring it down a little bit. Let's split that picket in half and use two and three quarter inch material. Then you have two boards that are two and three quarter inches wide by 72 inches long. So I'm gonna use the 16 inch version and a fence picket just as an example. I'll take two fence pickets, I'll rip those down the middle. I'll cut 15 parts that are 16 inches long. Then I'll add these 45 or 50 degree tips to each board. And there you have your pickets. And the only difference would be for the medium and the large one, you would actually be ripping down four fence pickets instead of the two. But still that's gonna keep you within your price range because I just used the $2 cheap pine pickets. There's no need in buying cedar or anything like that for this build because you're going to be painting it. And now we're going to get to our distressing. And I did mine just a little bit different than what they did with theirs. And this style of distressing is actually really fun because you really can't mess it up. You just take whatever odd colored paints that you have laying around and essentially you're just stacking paint on top of paint. Also just take some random objects you paint over to make little square spots where the color will pop out and leave some of it natural. This is the fun part. This is the creative part and you cannot mess it up. So once I have my paint on there, I let it dry, lightly hit it with a sander just to blend some of those colors and fade out some of those edges. And then I went over the top with a dark stain and wiped it off. And that's just going to give it these dull colors instead of like super bright colors. And next, get creative with your distressing. You notice how on there's, there's like odd scratchings and odd puncture patterns and things like that. And that's because most likely this is actually built out of pallet wood. But there's a million different ways to replicate this. Like you notice what I did here. I'd actually sprayed over a truss strap and then I just took a nail a few holes in that. Um, the center board here. So all I did was take a strip of roofing nails that go into a roofing gun. 
laid it on my board and hit the top with a hammer. It put all those little holes in there. And that's the cool part about this build is that you can use anything. The more rustic, the more vintage that you get with this, the better. But the painting and distressing does not take long at all, so don't get hung up on that. So once you have all of your boards painted and distressed, it's time to connect them. Let's go ahead and take what's left of our two and three quarter inch material and go ahead and rip it down to two inches. You'll be needing six of those boards that are 18 inches long. So then you'll take five of your fence pickets, lay them face down. We'll put about a three quarter or one inch spacing, whatever you prefer, in between each board. And next, that's all we'll do is just attach the back boards that we just cut. It looks like it's about four inches from the bottom and four inches from the top. Use wood glue and brad nails. That panel is done. Repeat for the next two panels. Now to connect these panels together, it's all that they've used here are butt hinges and they are cheap. You can actually pick these up on Amazon if you buy them in bulk. They're only like 50 cents a piece and you can paint those any color that you would like. And that's all that there is to it. So what they are selling for $150, even with the hinges, you can still make it for less than $10. And that's just assuming that you have random old paint laying around. If you have to buy different color paints, you have to factor that in. But anytime I catch random color paint like this on sale, I pick it up because I know that there will be something that I'll need it for. And one last thing to point out, let's say that you're making a 16 inch picket and you don't have a 16 inch piece left. Do not cut a new board. Do something like this. So all that I did was attach it together with a piece of scrap wood. And you see that they've done the exact same thing with theirs using like a splining jig or something, but they did not waste any material. I'm not going to just put this into a fall category because it's not. This item will sell year round, which makes it evergreen. And those are the types of items that you want in your arsenal. And if you're still with me at this point and you like these types of videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell. That is one way that I can tell what types of videos that people like. So I can make more of it. Okay, so this next one I thought was super cool. I I have not seen this before and they are calling these plank pumpkin sitters. They'll make these in three different sizes. I'm going to focus on the large one. You'll do the exact same steps, but then you'll just go down a few inches in size for the other two. So this large one is 11 inches wide by nine inches tall. Now for those, they're using three quarter of an inch material. And I actually like this idea so much. I decided to make my own version. The only thing that I did not like was how thin the material was. Again, this looks like it's about three quarters of an inch thick. I decided to go with this chunky style. Now, this is just my version of this. If you do not like this color scheme, that is completely fine. It would look awesome just like this with like a black undercoat and a white top. So let me tell you how they made these and how I made this one. I figured that someone would ask for the plans for something like this, but for all three sizes, which is essentially just going to be a series of templates because these two boards are identical. So I went ahead and made some up. So if you're interested in something like that, I'll throw the plans in my Etsy shop, but you do not need them because these things are simple to make. Okay, so you know I like to give demos of things as I'm explaining how to do it. But regardless of the thickness of the material that you decide to use, the steps are going to be the exact same. So what they have done here for their large one, they've taken three quarter inch material, cut two boards into a nine by 11 rectangle. So we're just going to pretend that this is the nine by 11. And then to start with, they're going to measure over and down an inch and a half to two inches on every single corner and then they will draw a 45 across each corner once you have your 45s marked go ahead and make those cuts and then that's going to leave you with something that looks similar to this i made this one a little more square than rectangle but you get the point 45 45 45 and 45 you need two of these and then the next step is whatever height that this is so since the one that we are going off of is 11 inches tall you'll find your center point between the two 45s and you'll measure down half the distance of the length so in this case it's going to be five and a half inches now this is where the thickness of the material is going to come into play for this example this material is only a half of an inch thick their material is three quarters of an inch thick so the next step is going to be using your center point cut a notch the same thickness of the material that you're using to the halfway point or in this case the five and a half inch point that we have found so for this example the notch is a half of an inch wide for what they made they use three quarter material so their notch will be three quarters of an inch and for something like this, what I made, I used an inch and a half material. So my notch was an inch and a half wide. And to make all of these cuts, including the notch, even on this thick material, and that's all that I used was a jigsaw. But once your notches are cut on both boards, you will have something that looks like this. Go ahead and sand and clean this up. Then you'll take the matching piece. Again, we're going to play pretend here and just slide the two notches into each other. And so you can see on this thicker one, we had the notch here, the notch here. So on this board, the notch is at the top and goes up and they just interlock. And that is pretty much it. Throw a little wood glue in there, you're set. And for the tops, check this out. I literally went outside of my shop, found a dead branch, cut it off, 
glued it onto here and then found some old vine. I probably have poison ivy, who knows, but found some old vine and wrapped it around here and glued it on. You do not have this vine. You can use like some burlap or something like that, or just pick up an old wreath somewhere. The whole thing is made out of vines. But what makes these things super cool is that they are so easy to make. They are pricing their three quarter inch plank pumpkins between $22 and $26 a piece, depending on the size. And if you decide that you would like to build one a little thicker like this, I used a two by 10, which is actually nine and a quarter. Eight foot two by tens in my area right now are $9 and 90 some cents. So essentially you can build four of these. I can make a large one of these for $2 and 50 cents. I don't think that I'd have any trouble at all getting $20 a piece for these. Or if you make the entire set, they're wanting somewhere around 75 bucks. I think that you could easily move these things for 40 or 45 bucks a set. So for this next one, the reason why it caught my eye was because it was $32 on sale and it almost has this three-dimensional look. So by adding another layer to this, they actually made it stand out. And the other thing that caught my eye about this was how cheap it would be for us to make this. So this fall harvest decor, you see how they did that? They actually called this fall harvest, which I love it. But anyway, this wooden pumpkin is 11 inches wide by 12 inches tall and only three quarters of an inch thick. But that's three quarters on the base layer as well as the top strips. So what I'm going to use for this is three different boards. So they actually use three boards as well. So I'm gonna take a $2 fence picket or pallet wood if you have it. And then I'm gonna rip it down to a four inch width and I'm gonna cut three parts that are 12 inches long. Now you can take those three parts and you can actually glue those together and wait for that to dry or you can do what they did. That is going to be the easiest way to hold this together. Plus the front strips, once you put those on, that's gonna be holding it together from the front. So what I would do, if I used a fence picket, you're gonna have an inch and a half strip left that you cut off. I'm gonna use that as the back strips. So you just lay your three boards down flat, butt that together, cut two pieces of that one and a half inch board of 12 inches, add wood glue, and then I would actually brad nail those in, one near the top and one near the bottom. Now this will actually be the back of the pumpkin. And before we actually add the top strips, let's go ahead and cut out this shape. Now, if you notice, there is nothing uniform about this shape. You want the rustic farmhouse look, the primitive handmade look. So before you even say, oh, I can't cut out this pumpkin. Yes, you can, because you do not have to be an artist to draw this. So let's just say that this is your three boards. You're literally just gonna be taking a jigsaw, cutting off these sharp angles kind of freehand. When you get to the top where the stem is, you want to mark center, and then you'll just cut, you know, something like this. See, doesn't have to be perfect, but once this is stained, it's gonna look awesome. And speaking of stain, once all of this is cut out, go ahead and stain the whole thing kind of a medium brown. Again, if you're using Memwax, I like early American, but, it really doesn't matter what brand you use as long as you get this dark brown look. And while you're staining that, let's go ahead and stain the material that you're gonna be using to make these top strips. Just take a scrap piece of your fence picket, go ahead and stain all of this brown as well. Then once that dries, let's go ahead and cut out these top pieces. Again, look at these shapes. There's nothing special about these shapes. You really cannot mess this up. Give it kind of a square blocky look. You want each one of these corners to stand out. That's what gives it this interesting look. You're not looking for the lines to flow. So I've actually cut one out just to kind of show you how easy that it is. I used a jigsaw for this and just sanded the corners over. And this is what it would have looked like before I cut it out. The next one, you can actually go over the top and cut it out. So that's where you get your smaller ones that are on the inside and then the larger ones that are on the outside. So once you have all of your slats cut, it's kind of weird calling these things slats. I do not know what else to call these things. If you have any idea, drop it into the comments. I mean, they look like little boomerangs or, or something, but I'm gonna call them slats because I can't think of anything else. So once you have all of your slats cut, let's go ahead and hit any part that we've cut with stain, that way everything matches underneath, then attach these to our base using wood glue and brad nails. Next, just pick your paint color of choice and dry brush this on, but just dip it down a little bit of paint, making sure to let some of the brown underneath to come out. And then once that dries, if you want to really critique your distressing, just lightly sand down some of the corners to let some of that brown pop through. Grass bow tie thing that they put at the top, but just anything to add a little decoration and you're done. You're selling these things for $32 a piece and you can get several out of one fence picket. Sell them as a set. You already have everything out. Small, medium, large. Throw $50 on a whole set. Or if you just want to make this large one like this, 20, 25 bucks, you're going to sell them. All right, so this next one, this is another pumpkin sitter. Super, super easy to build. So before I actually get into breaking this down, just a reminder, our Patreon community is growing like crazy. If you're interested in more of like a personal community, behind the scenes content, q and I'll make sure to throw a link in the description. So let's break down this build. Okay, so they're calling this a block sitter. 
So what caught my eye about this one is it's one and a half inch thick. It comes in three different sizes and all of those sizes are denominations of one and a half. So the little two by four light in my head went off and that's what these things are made out of. So they're made out of two by fours and they're asking what I would consider kind of high prices for, but obtainable. The large one they're wanting $50 a piece for. You can make two out of one two by four. The medium size ones, they are wanting $37 a piece and you can make three out of one two by four. And the small ones, they're wanting $32 a piece and you can make five out of one two by four. So needless to say, if you can kind of capture the market on these, they're going to be a money maker. All right, so how do they make it? You can almost just tell just by looking at it how they're made, but it's all one and a half by one and a half material. Take my two by four, cut off that rounded edge, and then cut two one and a half by one and a half strips out of that. Just FYI, if you want to know the sizes of each one of these, it's nine and a half by seven and a half. The medium one is a 12 by nine, and the large one is 14 and a half inches tall by 12 inches wide. So for this example, I'm just going to be using the dimensions for the large one. So it's 14 and a half inches tall by 12 inches wide. 12 divided by one and a half is is going to be eight so we're going to be needing eight strips that are 14 and a half inches long and then we will glue those eight strips up together just as a rectangle and i've actually done this just kind of as an example this is pretty much the base for this entire build so once your block is dried next thing we need to do is cut our angles so for this large one in each corner i measured over three inches and down three inches you can use a miter saw jigsaw circular saw whatever that you would like, handsaw, to just cut this off. So once you get all of your 45s cut, the next step would be to paint. And this is going to be up to you. The farmhouse white distressed is in right now. It kind of goes well with like those fancy smashed looking pumpkins. I don't know what they're called either, but you know, like the white ornamental pumpkins that they want like $15 for. I need to be in the pumpkin business. Actually, it was in the pumpkin business at one point, but uh, that's another story. So if you're going for that look, you would start off with a base coat of black paint. Again, I would just use the cheapest black spray paint that you could buy, coat this thing over, let that dry, and then you would go over the top with your white paint. So once all of that dries and sets, you'd lightly hit it with sandpaper to allow the black to come out in certain areas. And after your glue up, I wouldn't worry about sanding this. You may have some small lips and things like that, but that's actually going to help whenever you go to distress this at getting this dark line to look like they have here. And then once your painting and distressing is done, that's all that they have used for the top is this. You all have branches or you all have access to branches. I'm sure you can go on Amazon and buy branch pieces, but go outside, get some fresh air, get a little piece of branch, throw some CA glue or some wood glue on here, glue this baby on right at the top, and then just go around the edge with that whatever grass stuff that they put around the edge, wrap that stuff around the top or get creative. Actually go get some vine while you're outside. If you see some vine, as long as it's not poison ivy, rip that thing off the tree, wrap it around, dangle it down, whatever. But as easy as these things are to make, there's no reason why you should not be adding something like this to your fall lineup. And for this last one, I really haven't poked fun at the old PV in a while for selling like absolutely crazy things, but it's time. I found something whenever it came to the uh, fall decor and it's this stool. Okay, so I've sat on a lot of stools. I've made a lot of stools. That's not a stool. That's a log. And not only is it a log, that is a naked log. Okay. Somebody took the bark off of it. That's about it. And the crazy thing is not really that these companies are selling logs. It's that the 11 inch log that is 17 inches tall that I have plenty of those right out in my firewood pile is selling for $400 a piece. Now let's look at the big one. Okay. That was a small one. The 18 inch log, I mean, stool that is 17 inches tall. So same height, 18 inch diameter is $800 for a naked log, firewood. So all jokes aside, people are actually buying these things. So check out your firewood pile. You actually need this material to be dry. Strip off the bark, sand it down. And for something like this, I would actually pour epoxy over the top. It's self-leveling. Go ahead and just take a brush, move it into all the little crevices and things like that. And just kind of set it up to drip off. The hardest part about a log this size is actually getting a perfectly square cut. So I would actually put furniture levelers on the bottom. They're super cheap and you can actually inset those and make those super easy to hide. So if you want to go into the log stool business, there you go. Have to break back in. I thought we were done with the whole log thing. But check this out. This is the stem from the little pumpkin thing. What does that look like? It looks like a log stool. All right. 
dollhouse log stool or squirrel squirrel log stool anyway thank you guys so much for putting up with me and watching this video i hope you were able to see how you could just look at something break it down to its simplest form and recreate that yourself and as always this is a channel of no excuses i've just given you several ideas of things that you can make and you've already taken the first step you've watched this video and made it to the end which means you're interested in this so it's your turn get up gather some supplies and start making until next time, guys, we'll see ya.